Uh, it's important to go over a few basic theoretical concepts so you can understand a little bit about why we do things the way that we do them. So the first thing that you should know is dogs are consequence-based learners. They learn directly through consequences, both good and bad. When your dog was trained here, your dog received a lot of positive consequences for good behavior. And through many repetitions, your dog was taught what the desired behavior was for each command that they received, as well as they were also taught what they shouldn't be doing. Things like pulling on the leash, jumping, lunging, um, you know, barking at people inappropriately um, or other dogs. And, and then they were also taught the positive behaviors like sit down, come, heal, place, and so on and so forth. So it's important to understand that dogs work directly through a system of consequences. They, it, you must make it good to be good and you also must make it bad to be bad. Okay guys, so now that we've established that dogs are consequence-based learners, let's talk about how we're gonna put that into practice. So think of behavior and consequence as two separate things, two separate islands, if you will. What we need to do as the handlers of the dog is bridge the gap between behavior and consequence. So here's my behavior island and here's my consequence island. And I need to put a bridge between the two things so that my dog is never confused about why something good or why something bad happened. So. Behavior is anything that your dog does, whether it's an obedience command or something like jumping on the counter, chasing a squirrel, um, you know, be behavior is anything that your dog does. Consequence is something that you do in response to what your dog did. So if your dog did something good and you reward your dog with food or a toy, this is obviously a positive consequence. If your dog does something undesirable and you correct your dog with a leash or with the electric collar, um, or this is obviously a negative consequence. So let's first talk about the positive markers that we use to reinforce the good behaviors that your dog does. The first one is going to be the noise. And every time my dog hears that noise, he knows he's going to be getting something positive like a hot dog or a ball or anything that he finds pleasurable and enjoyable. It's basically the, the best way to explain the noise is C-H-I-P, chip. And I say it in that high-pitched tone of voice because it's like nothing else your dog will ever hear. And it's really easy for your dog to become classically conditioned to that noise and understand that every time I hear that, it's because I did something really good and I need to keep doing this thing to get what I get when I hear that noise. Chip. Good boy. He's healing now. I want to reward him for this good behavior. So I'm marking and rewarding and I'm giving him food. Oops. Good. Plus. Good boy, Marco. Good. Yes. Now, I don't always have something for my dog. And I still like to reinforce good behavior whether I have food or a toy or not. And for this, I have a praise marker. And my praise marker is simply good boy. Almost every dog on this planet loves to be praised by their handler. So for me, I praise my dogs in good behavior, even if I don't have an, a functional reward to give the dog. So if he's doing something good, good boy, good job. And he's going to receive that good marker to mark, hey, that thing you're doing right now, it's really good. I like it. Keep doing it. And that's just as powerful as giving my dog a ball or a piece of food. And it's really important when you're maintaining the training on your dog that you do all three, right? So if your dog likes toys, occasionally reward your dog with a toy. If your dog likes food, give your dog food. If your dog likes praise, give your dog praise. And vary, give your dog all three. You don't have to be constantly rewarding and praising your dog, but you should do it at key moments to keep encouraging your dog in the good behavior that he or she knows. Now, praise. A lot of people overpraise the dog. They praise the dog for everything. Just praise the dog when your dog does something good. Don't overdo it, but don't underdo it either. Arco, boost. Good boy, Arco. Good job. A little bit of a touch to the to the side of the head or to the nose. Dogs really like that. Good boy. Yeah. Good job. You see, he likes it. It's very pleasant for him. Sits. 
Good. Marco Fus. Good boy. Yeah. Okay, guys, it's time to talk about the negative markers or the markers for negative behaviors. So we have two of these markers. The first marker is ah ah. All right, and this lets the dog know that the thing that he is doing is incorrect. And we use this in the context of obedience. So for example, if I ask my dog to sit and he lies down, I'll say, ah, ah, sit. And I'll fix the dog into the correct behavior. Or if he's healing with me, gets a little bit in front of me, I'll say, ah, ah. And that's a warning to the dog. What you're doing is wrong. You need to change it. Okay? Um, at this stage, for your dog, your dog already knows the correct behavior. But I will still give the dog a chance with that verbal warning, ah, ah. But... If he continues to make the same mistake, so for exa example, let's pretend I have a dog who's healing and he constantly gets in front of me. I'm going to say, uh-uh, the first time. But then the second time he gets in front of me, it's going to be, uh-uh, and a firm correction, whether it's with the electric collar or whether it was with the prong collar. And the reason for this is if I always say, uh-uh, 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 obviously that's going to lose power because it's going to become meaningless for the dog. The reason why it works is because the dog understands that when he hears that noise, there's a possibility that he is going to receive a firm correction for the incorrect behavior. So it's important when you're doing this that you do it properly. The last one, um, the last marker is no. And, and this is for really inappropriate behavior. So those of you that have Gordon trains with us, if you have a dog who, for example, is dog aggressive or counter surfs, this is an example of when you would use the marker no. And you deliver that in a very firm, clear manner, no. And then you deliver your correction whether you're correcting the dog with the e-collar, whether you're correcting your dog with the prong collar or with the bonker. Um, it's really important that your dog hear no when the dog does the wrong thing. A lot of people make this mistake. They just correct the dog and then say no. The most important thing is to say no when the dog does the wrong thing, right? So for those of you that have the reactive dogs, when your dog barks or um, you know growls at somebody, don't just correct the dog, or don't wait three seconds and correct the dog, which is what a lot of people do. The second he does that thing, no! And then you can gather yourself and make the correction as necessary. So these markers are just as important as the positive markers. You never want your dog to be confused about why he or she received a correction.